Hollywood, California, we present Gene Herschel in a new Dr. Christian drama called Spring is Here. Brought to you by the Cheese Grow Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. And producers are Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. What's good for burns? Vaseline Jelly. You're right. Vaseline Jelly. Because Vaseline Jelly serves a triple purpose in the treatment of skin injuries. One, it forms a protective film which helps keep out the air and outside infections. Two, it promotes rapid healing. And three, it softens and lubricates the skin by supplementing the natural oil. You can depend on Vaseline Jelly. It is absolutely pure, contains no harmful or irritating ingredients. For safety's sake, get a jar of Vaseline Jelly from your druggist tomorrow. Do you want to win a free trip to the World's Fair and $150 in spending money besides? Well, then listen to the details of the big World's Fair contest at the end of this program. And now, it's curtain time for our Dr. Christian story. Spring is here. The sun swings high and the snow is gone. The grass grows faintly green on this bright morning with a promise of summer in the air as Dr. Christian walks into his office. Yes, I do. <laughs> you know I do. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> you do what? I... Oh, good morning, Dr. Christian. Is that one of my patients? Uh, no, no, it's just a friend of mine. Ah, I told you that handy. Huh? <laughs> but I have several calls for you. This is Mears called up, and Steve Winters, Tom Leary, and... Uh, Where did you get the roses? Uh, Josie? Yeah, on my entire desk. The dozen. No, 14, 15, 16. 18, I think. Oh, those, yes. Yeah. Uh, I thought you'd like them. You mean you thought by bringing them here you could look at them all day long, huh? Well, I... Uh, Who is she? Well, this nobody special. Is it the upstanding young man? Who? Yeah, the young man who's been calling you up dandy, but continues to go all year. Oh, you mean Gerald. I mean Gerald. No, it's not Gerald. Mm, not too bad. I rather like the young man's position. Oh, Gerald's a dear. She's always there in the background, like... Like, like wallpaper. <laughs> yes, like wallpaper. I'm very fond of Gerald. Yeah, you ought to be. But devotion deserves a reward. Well, who is the donor of my roses? You see everything, don't you? It isn't hard to see each and American beauty reason for these old eyes. <laughs> oh, they are lovely, aren't they? No, oh, you need to think you should be after talking about the flowers. I have a one track mind. <laughs> and if Casey starts giving me a symptoms, I wonder who. Please, hey, hey, hey. Then I can prescribe. Ah, uh, you don't need to prescribe to me. I'm on top of the world. On top of the world, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, spring's a great time of the year. You know why? You mean because... because of love? Ah, uh, I mean because of parsnip. Parsnip? Certainly. Parsnip. That queen of vegetables. Dug in the early spring. Ah. Uh. Oh, we used to look forward to the movie with children. All the vegetables we had down the cellar were almost gone. Only a few potatoes were left and a few squashes. And then, along came parsnips. Ah, uh, yeah, I've been talking about parsnips and love at the same time. Ah, we can have love. I'll take parsnips. <laughs> Judy, did you ever taste parsnips, too? Certainly not. I bet you even haven't tasted parsnips with hot cream sauce, have you? Mmm. Or, or parsnips spiked to a golden brown, or parsnips... Hey, you better start out on your calls, you know. Oh, so it isn't here, are you? Well, who is it? It... Promise you won't tell. Cross my heart. I never tell anything. It's... It's Dr. Gardner. You mean Ralph Gardner? Yes. Well, oh, I am surprised. I didn't even know you knew him. Yep, I know him. Mm-hmm, I... I can see that. I didn't believe I'd ever fall in love. No, strange to think you got it happen in the spring. Well, I don't think it's just spring. It would have happened any time. That's what started last winter. Yes, it's the dry gardener. No, it is. It's only that he's a tree. You can't think of getting married, yet of all. Oh, we're not going to get married for a year or two. And that's a long time to wait. Oh, I don't know, baby. Now, when are you announcing the engagement? Oh, we're not. Nobody must know a thing about it. We've got to keep it terribly secret. Why? Well, in the first place, his uncle's helping him. I mean, financing him until he gets the taxi started. The last thing his uncle wants him to do is marry a girl like me. A girl like you, I see you're the finest girl in the world. Oh, I don't mean that. I mean, somebody who can't bring him anything. Why, well, you can bring him everything. Love, loyalty, strength of character, and happiness. 
Oh, what else can a young man ask? Thank you, Dr. Kirsten. Nonsense, that's true. And if he's even suggested that you need to bring more than this to make your marriage a success, then... Oh, well, no, he hasn't, but there's no sense in upsetting his particular apple cart right at the start. And as long as he knows how I feel, I know how he feels. You're willing to wait till the end of the world, if necessary. Mm, think of British beauty prize talking this way. <laughs> I can hardly believe it myself. Oh, love is a wonderful thing. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. It, it does something to you. It makes you sing inside. Yeah, I think that just might love pretty well. Something that makes you sing inside. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I meet Rice Gardner, I'm not supposed to know about this. Oh, no, no, you don't know anything about it at all. Oh, but people will see you all together. They're about to start talking. Well, they won't even see us together much. We have to be awfully careful about that, too. You see, I don't want to do anything to spoil his chances. It's much more important for him to get ahead right now than for us to be together all the time. You, you, you love him, don't you? Yes. Yes, I love him. Oh, yes. <laughs> No, thank goodness, darling, he's not in. Nobody's in except me. Well, I'll have three of you to come here and see me. Well, I, I didn't come to see you, Judy. I, uh... Oh. Well, aren't those the roses I sent you on that thing? Yes. Yeah. Aren't they lovely? What are they doing down here? Well, they're here because... Because I brought them here. But you know, Dr. Christian think it's clear for you to be getting roses like that? Oh, he'd never even notice it. I get dozens of roses every day from his marriage. Say nothing of all kids and God do you. No, oh, but on the level, Judy, he, he, he doesn't know I sent them, does he? Oh, uh, well, he may. I'm not sure. You didn't tell him, did you? There's no harm in telling anybody the most attractive doctor in Center City sent me home. Judy, here, Judy, I'm serious. You mustn't let on Judy's that so I... You're so worried about Ralph. I'm not going to tell anybody anything I shouldn't. Sit down, darling. Oh, I haven't time. I, I just came to see Dr. Christian about the Leighton boy. Oh. He's not doing as well as he ought to. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I want him to go over to the hospital. When will he be in? Any minute now. Oh, sit down. Come on. It's so wonderful having you here. I can hardly believe it. No, I, I can't. I've got to get right back. Oh, not for just one little minute. I think I haven't seen you for two whole days. I thought of you were last evening. I know you must be working terribly hard if you have a date with him. Well, I, I, I've got to work hard if I'm ever going to get any place. But not too hard, darling. You've got to play, too. Oh, I can't begin to tell you how much I love the flowers. And your note. You, uh, tore up the note, didn't you? Tore it up? I should say not. Yeah. You know, I tore up my heart. I ought never to have written it. I might have known you'd keep it. But, darling, why shouldn't I keep it? I told you once, I told you a dozen times, Judy, that our... Uh, our engagement must have been out. Oh, it won't. I'll see to that. But, Ralph, I'm so proud of your loving me. Well, I, I feel the same way about you, but... You see, my, my uncle will never give me another cent if he thinks I'm thinking about getting married yet a while. I need every penny he can spare till I get my practice going. And you will get it going, too, darling. You'll be the most famous doctor in the Western Hemisphere. And I hope you. Oh, do a bit of harm to have a wife who knows how to look after an office and send out the bills. You'll find me useful as well as ornamental. Oh, Judy, you're sweet. Of course I'm sweet. I could have told you that a long time ago. Judy, I'm head over heels in love with you. You know it? Oh, mm-hmm. I hear you. I saw it again. Please say it again. So that I can take it away in my heart. I'm in love with you, Judy. Thank you. That's a wonderful thing. That's just what Dr. Christian said this morning. Huh? How'd he happen to say that? Well, uh, we were talking about spring, and he was saying it's a beautiful time of year, and well, I don't even know how he happened to say it. He said that way. You told him about us. Uh, darling, maybe I did, but you never tell anybody, never in a million years. But you promised me that I you know wouldn't. I did, but I didn't mean to say a word. Surely I didn't. But darling, I couldn't bear to let him think it was somebody else. He guessed it was Jerry. Imagine my loving Jerry the way I love you. Well, you had no right to tell him. I know. I knew it the minute it floated out of me. 
with telling Dr. Christian things is different from telling him to anybody else. Uh, he's the last person I wanted to know. Ralph. He's an old busybody, minding everybody's business but his own. Ralph, you can't call him that. He's the kindest man in the world. Well, it puts me in a spot, Judy. What do you mean? Him. He'll expect us to get married before long. Oh, no, no, he won't. I told him we weren't going to get married for a year or two. I told him I'd wait for you forever if I had to. Yes, but don't you see? Anytime he got sore at me about anything, he can just go and spill the beans. But he won't, Ralph. And once Uncle John gets wind of it, that I'm marrying somebody... Somebody who hasn't a nickel in the world? Well, it isn't bad. It is. It's just that he thinks the young man starting out in practice ought to be free. He'd feel the same way, no matter who it was. Okay. If Uncle John clamps down on me at this stage of the game, it'll be years before we can even talk about getting married. I'm sorry, Ralph. Well, you, you ought to be sorry. I'll tell you what to do. Hmm? Uh, tell Dr. Christian we're not engaged. Tell him we busted up. I'll oh. put him off the track. Oh, Ralph, I can't bear to do that. If you don't, you'll bust up for fair. Oh. Right now, my career is more important to me than anything else. And it ought to be to you, too. It would be if you cared anything about me. Oh, I do care. You know I do. Well, then you go ahead and tell Dr. Christian we've busted up. Oh, but... Give him any reason you like, just so he believes you. And... To make the story sound true, I'm going to cut out seeing you for a while. Oh, please don't do that. Well, it serves you right. It'll teach you not to talk out of turn. You know, a doctor's wife has got to learn to keep your mouth shut. Oh, but, yeah, how long before, before I can see you again? I don't know. When I think it's okay, I'll call you up. Well, i got to go now. I've got to get out of here before Dr. Christian gets back. Well, please, wait a minute. I'm please. Time to wait. the curtain comes down on the first act of our Dr. Christian drama for this evening. During intermission, may we say a few words about the products that make this program possible. Thousands of women now share the secret of keeping their hair soft and lustrous with Vaseline hair tonic. It's as easy as ABC. Before a shampoo, massage your scalp well with Vaseline hair tonic and steam it ten minutes with towels wrung out in good hot water. You'll be delighted with the result. You see, Vaseline hair tonic supplements the natural scalp oils, which dry heat and soap and water tend to remove. And it's economical. One bottle contains enough for several of these important pre-shampoo treatments. Get Vaseline hair tonic from your druggist today and save the carton. It may help you win a free trip to the World's Fair or $250 in cash. Listen for the details of this easy-to-enter contest at the end of this program. <laughs> here, starring Jean Hersholt in the role of Dr. Christian. The scene is again the familiar, comfortable office on State Street, where pretty Judy Price sheds gaiety and good humor over the doctor's patients and their troubles. Only tonight... Don't go, me, Judy. I, I know I'm late, but I had to stop in at Bentos. But the baby's going to be all right, isn't that fine? I tell you, I was worried for a while. I didn't like the looks of the way that people stayed up. Uh, any callers? No, only, uh, only Dr. Gardner. Dr. Gardner, eh? Well, now I understand why I wasn't scolded for being late. He wanted to talk to you about the Leighton boy. What's wrong with him? Well, he's taking a turn for the worse. You have to go right over to the hospital. What did he say? He said... He said... Why? You're crying. No, I'm not. Is anything wrong? No. Well, what's the matter? Tell me quick. I, I've got to hear. Well, I was angry at me for telling you about him. So, uh, Judy, do you know I've never seen you cry before? What did he say? Oh, nothing. Much. And has he... Have you broken up? Yes, he's broken off. Good. How can you say that? Because I mean it. He doesn't mess up to you, my dear, and he never will. No young man who wants to keep a deep dark secret of his engagement to the lovely affair in Rover Sandy's on the level. You don't understand. I understand everything about it. You had a lucky escape. Thank you, stars. May I speak to Miss Judy five minutes? Oh, the persistent young man. Well, come in, come in, Jerry. Don't come in mean, now. I've got to work with you. Young man, you heard me. Come right in. 
I have to leave for the hospital in an urgent case. You have to stay here and cheer up my secretary, Judy Price, who seems depressed at losing something of no value. Did you lose something, Judy? Ah, uh, it's not worth talking about. Well, maybe I can find it for you. What is it? Nothing. Oh, you're crying. Why does everybody say I'm crying? I'm not crying. Gee, Judy, if anything's wrong, maybe I can help. Huh? You know, I'd like to help more than anything else in the world. All you have to do is tell me what I can do, and I'll be there to do it. See here, this is ridiculous. You'll kill yourself, Judy, if you go on working like this. I won't have it. This is the fourth night in a row that I've come by at 11 o'clock and seen a light in this office. Why don't you go to home and go to bed? Oh, I'm all right. All right, work night and day? I guess I've killed anybody. Well, it's killing you. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Of course not. I haven't time to look in the mirror. Well, you ought to take time. Besides, I, I, I don't want to forget around town that I keep my secretary here with the notes to the grindstone till all hours of the night. <laughs> oh, but I love to work. Nonsense. Nobody loves to work in a night like this. Have you been outdoors? Of course not. Well, I'm allowed long out to the port then. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Put the towel on that side, right? But I haven't finished this letter yet. I... I'll finish it tomorrow. Put your hat and coat. Hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Have you had any dinner? Oh, well, uh... what are you thinking about? You can't go on indefinitely without food. Look, you. No young man is worth getting yourself into this state of life. Oh, I'm not in any state. Of course you are. But eating regularly and living on your nervous energy instead? I won't have it, you hear? But I'm not living on nervous energy, Dr. Christian. I'm happy, really I am. Happy? Worrying about this worthless young man who calls himself a doctor? He's not worthless. He's wonderful. Oh, still in love with him, eh? Where's your pride, Judy? How can you love a man who doesn't love you? Oh, but he does. Um, mm, mm. Oh, he does? You made it up? Oh, I may as well tell you. We never broke up. We, we just pretended we did. I don't understand. Oh, I know you don't. You see, Ralph was furious when he found out I'd told you about us. He didn't want anybody to know. So I had to pretend that we'd broken our engagement. He said we'd been meeting nights after both of us got through working. Oh, he's working nights too, is he? Oh, yes. Yeah. Every single night. He's trying to get ahead as fast as he can. That's why I don't mind working that too. It's almost like, you know, like being beside him. Judy, you amaze me. What do you mean? Believing this cock and bull story about his working every night. Oh, but it's true. He hasn't a thought in the world except getting ahead so we can get married soon. That's all he cares about. Judy, Judy, the fate of women is incredible. Well, now you're going to come with me over to the tavern for a bite to eat. Oh, I don't want anything, truly, I don't. Of course you do. You're going to get it whether you want to or not. And do your good. Now, they have music there, and we can watch the people dancing, and can sit by an open window and smell spring in here. since we met so many people I know and can hear them all saying, Ah, there's Dr. Christian now with his young secretary, Judy Price. <laughs> Who'd ever talk out of him? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'll bet they're saying the lucky girl. <laughs> oh, smell that air. It's heavenly. Yes, it's sweet and earthy and full of the promise of spring. Beauty, spring is here. I know it. Yes, sir, we'll soon be having parsnips again. <laughs> ah, you and your parsnips. 
It's only too bad I'm not having this modern dancing so I could take a turn with you. Well, come on. Should we try? Oh, oh no, certainly not. Oh. In the first place, I don't know the new steps. And in the second, uh, these dance orchestras nowadays never seem to stop playing. Every dance becomes one of those marathons to read about. <laughs> <laughs> they have been dancing a long while, haven't they? Interesting. <laughs> I bet that old fellow with that blonde girl would give his right arm if the music would stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to drop. <laughs> oh. oh, I wish Ralph were here. Now, oh, is that polite? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Well, he is here. Well, so he is. If that's one of the cases he's working over, he's certainly to be envied. Oh. I don't understand. He said that... You know, his friends got him by the coattails, too. Dancing with Laura Payson. You mean Jeffrey Payson's daughter? Yeah. Well, that ought to be a lucrative case. The father just about owns everything in Center City, doesn't he? I don't know. I don't understand it. Do you mind if we go, Dr. Christie? Oh, of course not. He's probably got an explanation, Judy. He told me he was going to be in the library at the hospital at past midnight. He told me... I'm sorry, Judy. I, I left the town to park and space at the back of the tavern. I'll go and get it if you'll wait here a minute. All right. I'll wait. I'll be back before you know it. Music could never end. What do you say we go out and get ourselves a hunk of fresh air? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, enough dancing for one evening. How about a drive along the lake? Uh, Ralph. Uh, uh, hello, Judy. Ralph, I want to speak to you. Oh, uh, Laura, do you know Dr. Christian's secretary, Miss Price? How do you do? How do you do? Well, take a minute, Ralph. Miss Price has a message for me from Dr. Christian. I think something's gone wrong at the hospital. Do you mind waiting for me out on the steps, Laura? I'll be there in a second. All right, darling. I mean, don't take too long. I won't. She calls you, darling. Okay. <laughs> she calls everybody, darling. You've been dancing here all evening. Well, so have you. No, I haven't. I just got here. Spy on me, I suppose. Well, how can you say that? Well, I won't have it. You're here, I won't have it. Well, how can you say that after after last night? You were Dr. Christian. Failing me here in hopes of getting something on me. Oh. Well, I'll make your trip worthwhile. I'm going to marry Laura Pace. Ralph, wait. I've got to talk to you. Hurry up, Ralph. I'll be right there. I'm sick of you keeping tabs on everything I do, asking me a million questions, following me around. Ralph, places. I never. It's all over, I tell you. I don't have to listen to any more of your preaching, thank heaven. Come on, Laura. We'll go get the car. Sorry, keep it away. Oh, I've got the car to go. I. What's the matter, Peter? Oh, Dr. Christian. Come on, get in the car. How could he? How could he? What's the matter? Yeah, that girl. Oh, I can't bear it. You can bear it, Judy. You've got to bear it. Every time a woman gives away her heart, she takes the chance of having a broken. But I love him so. I love him so. I know you think so now. But even if you'd married him, that love would only have lasted a little while. Oh. This way of least you're free. Did you find somebody who was worthy of you? I don't want anybody else. Oh, of course you don't now, but you will. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Try all you want to. This old shoulder has had a lot of practice. What do you see in that, that fat-legged bleach blonde? I'm afraid it's... I'm afraid it's not the gold in the hair, Judy. Well, is that the kind of person he is? Yes, Judy, that is the kind of person he is. <laughs> Christian, did you know about Laura Payson all the time? I bet you took me there on purpose. I took my poor starving secretary out to get her by tea. Yes, you did. You know everything, don't you? Mm, doctor gets around, you know. He's all, knows all, and says nothing. Ah, that's the girl. I'm glad to see your stories with him, Judy. You have me worried. Well, that's that. Let's never mention the subject again. All right, Judy. It's a deal. 
And I'm never, never so help me Peter going to fall in love again. Oh, yes, you will, Judy. But just as surely as spring comes around each year and the trees fill with sap and the buds begin to burst open, love comes around again, too. curtain comes down on another Dr. Christian drama. Our star, Jean Hirschold, will be here to greet you in a moment and tell you about next week's story. Everyone listening has an equal opportunity to win a free trip to the New York World's Fair or to the San Francisco Fair. A first-class round-trip ticket plus $150 in cash or $250 in cash instead. That's what you get if you win first prize in this easy-to-enter contest. Now, there are 100 first prizes and 5,000 valuable second prizes besides. This contest is packed with prizes, packed with adventure, and as easy as pie to enter. Just choose the fair you'd prefer to see, then write a letter which starts this way. I want to see the World's Fair because... And finish your letter in 50 words or less. And close with your letter a carton, wrapper, or label tracing from Vaseline Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, or from any other product sold under the Vaseline trademark, or from any Colgate Palmolive toilet kit. Mail your entry to Vaseline Products, 17 State Street, New York City, before midnight, May 15th, when the contest closes. Write your letter either on plain paper or on the regular entry blank containing full details of the contest, now available at all drugstores. You can enter this contest as many times as you wish. Start on the first one tonight. Just 50 words to write, everything to gain. Remember the address? Vaseline Products, 17 State Street, New York City. The artists you heard tonight included talented young Rosemary DeCamp in the popular role of Judy Price, Frederick Shields as Dr. Ralph Gardner, Barney Phillips as Jerry, Anne Wigton as Laura Payson, and our star, Jean Herschel, as Dr. Christian. Dr. Christian, what kind of story have you selected for us for next week? Well, next week's play is called Homemade Hero. I know you'll enjoy it because it concerns a young man and a young woman in our town who lost, found, or suspected. And so until next Tuesday evening, I say good night. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday at the same hour to hear Gene Herschel, famous Hollywood star, as Dr. Christian in the drama Homemade Hero. Presented for your enjoyment by the producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. Spring is Here is from I Married an Angel. This Can't Be Love is from the boys from Syracuse. And You're a Sweet Little Headache is from Paris Honeymoon. This is Arthur Gilmore bidding you good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.